Inside this stack of papers are the MOUs between 76 school districts and their cities or police departments. Now, MOU stands for Memorandum of Understanding. Essentially, these are contracts. And built into these are the costs for officers' salaries, benefits, overtime, and equipment. And those costs vary dramatically from district to district. We wanted to know exactly how much each district has to pay for police departments and their services because the money that they're being paid is earmarked for education. Just fired man from school. Bullets flying through the halls of a school. You don't think it's gonna happen here. Children running for cover. It's a nightmare scenario for parents and school districts that's played out too many times in schools across the country. It's also the reason many districts work with local police departments to protect their children. And while those relationships make sense, the dollars and cents invested into those services are drastically different. We found six school districts that get at least one school resource officer at no cost to the district. On the flip side, there are several districts that pay six figures for at least one of their full-time school resource officers. We do have the largest buildings in the state, so that means we have to think that through carefully. And so the MOU that we've um, agreed on is an investment from our taxpayers. It's, it's been approved by our board and by the uh, city of Mason for um, just over a half a million dollars a year. So $650,000 is the investment that we make annually. Jonathan Cooper is the superintendent of Mason City Schools. Of the 76 school districts that responded to our records request, their agreement with the city costs the most per SRO at $120,000 per campus safety officer. And the original contract was for three full-time positions. It also included several other fees. It's a deal that was signed five years ago and has hasn't been updated since that time, but the city says the resources they dedicate to the schools has changed with eight officers now dedicated to campus safety. Yeah, we rolled everything into those costs. That's salary, that's insurance, that's pension, and those numbers may sound high. They haven't been updated for, well, since we began, so 2018. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Good. Middletown City Schools is another district paying a comparably large price tag for resource officers. Each of their full-time officers costs the district more than $112,000 a year in salary and benefits, a price tag Police Chief David Burke says the district offered to pay. Well, they came and they approached me and they said, look, we would like to fund three school resource officers fully and then also give them a stipend for a vehicle which I said I couldn't pass that up as the chief. And then we also have an MOU for three part-time. Um, the school pays approximately 75%. We get them in the summer and we pay their additional 25%. You have different uh, careers available to you. Not every district pays for all of those line items like salary, benefits, and equipment. Just across the Ohio River in Fort Thomas, the SRO is provided at no cost to the district. I am a police, but specifically a school resource officer, right? Yes, we're helping the schools, but the school is the, is the city, right? I mean, all the students that are there are citizens, so it's not like we're we're helping out and in, inappropriately in using tax funds. You got handcuffs? Look at that. <gasps> While those are examples of the two extremes of the cost spectrum, many fall somewhere in between with districts paying an hourly rate or a fraction of the officer's salary. The other cost that comes into play for about 20% of the districts is an equipment or training fee that's built into each agreement. Little Miami Schools pays for the full acquisition price of a cruiser under their current deal with Hamilton Township. The five districts that employ the Butler County Sheriff's Office incur an expense for laptops and air cards. Mason is again near the top of the list when it comes to extra expenses. The district is asked to pay $120,000 annually for extra staffing and $50,000 for equipment that includes uniforms, canines, and police cruisers for campuses that are within eyesight of the police station. The campus is right there. Just walk over. Well, the high school's right there. The middle school's down there. There's two other schools down there, and the MECC's three miles away. And if we want to maximize the time an officer is available at the school, no, I don't want to walk them over there. I want a cruiser that's at the school because that's its own deterrent. Police vehicle sounds great, but they're steps away from your building. 
They are close. We're fortunate to have our police officers right there on campus, but we do have um, that 50,000 is invested in several ways. There are other um, proactive security measures that are put in place within our buildings that um, we discuss with the police. It's um, a confidential conversation about safety in general, so we don't just publish everything we're doing with safety. There may be safety pieces that we're, that we're not familiar with because we're educators that they need to have in place so that their response time can be very quick um, and appropriate. On Tuesday, we dive deeper into Mason's program, which the city considers the model for the future of campus safety. Mason's model is significantly different than most because it includes the schools, the city building, the courts, a park, private businesses. That's all rolled into one. We'll also discuss whether or not the schools have explored other options, such as using the sheriff's department that charges an hourly rate or even private security. In studio, Ken Brown, Fox 19 now.